it seems funny to me, but I get a whole lot of questions about loading and chalks and how do I use my RV and all that stuff. And since I'm right now spending some time taking on water, which my buddy who's a captain says that's a bad thing. But anyway, um, got to fill my water tank because where I'm going, a place named Windy Acres in Fruitland Park does not have hookups at all. So I'm running generator, you know, my onboard tanks and all that stuff for the next few days before, uh, as the Leesburg Rally ends. And then... Uh, come home and unload everything so while that's taking water I'll show you my chalks and then later I'll video sort of how I mount the bikes and all that stuff so like back in the day I remember if you were going on a crazy long trip and you weren't riding maybe your bike wasn't reliable enough for whatever the reason you just ride it up in the back of a pickup truck so you had a, a ramp at a dealer or someone had a ramp and you put your bike up in the pickup truck you put the front wheel in the left corner and the right rear you maybe you drug her over cinched her up real good and on the kickstand maybe or not whatever and that's it you know you would compress the forks until fluid was popping out the freaking top but you don't do that so much anymore we have better stuff these days so i'm going to show you the chalks that i use i've had two different well, actually I had a couple different kinds over the years but two major different kinds let me show you that and then i'll show you what i actually do use and your first is sort of you know your basic stopper chalk this is a pingle which is a good brand um we've got a couple of these and we used to use them forever ago but all it is is a stopper your wheel goes in there butts up against that and then you, you know your straps go forward and there you go these have you know a mounting bolts are right here and then this little jobbers there but and these do the job, but all it's doing is stopping your bike from going forward. It's not stabilizing at all. I mean, that's the width you got. It's not adjustable, et cetera. So you can guys in different sizes, but what I use is a Condor, which is much better. So we'll show that real quick. You can quick. tell from the filth. I've had that a while, but that's a, that's a, a Condor PSTS, Pit Stop Trailer Stop. And this one is meant for either just use in the garage, or you can lock it to your trailer floor. So there's sort of a and other sort of small bracket that mounts in the floor. There are two sort of teeth here that go in there and slide forward and then a thumb screw goes down through that hole into the bracket. Just a little bracket by yay big, not a big deal. And you can also, do, as, as you're seeing it right here, just use it in the garage. You know, you set it in the garage, ride the bike up into it, don't use a kickstand, and it is stable. You can adjust the rear piece, you know, forward and backward um, for whatever size wheel you got. Make sure you set that right because two problems. <laughs> Tell you a story. So two things that can go wrong if you don't set them up right. If you've got that rocker too far back, when you pull your bike in, it ain't coming back out. <laughs> not without help. And not unless the, uh, the chalk is mounted somewhere. So if you're just using it in the garage and you got that rocker too far back, you ride in, you get off the bike, you walk away and don't realize that that wheel is now in the chalk. It ain't, it ain't coming out unless someone stands on that thing while you rock it back, again, unless it's mounted to the floor. Uh, if you have it too far forward, the rocker too far forward, bike's not real stable in there. And I actually, not that long ago, I had the, the red Cholo bike sitting in this, and I had not, I thought I had it in the different, I have two of these, by the way, and one of them set real far back, one of them set real far forward. And <laughs> I rode it in there and came out, and it had gently laid over. Like, it had no scratches, no nothing, but, and that's because it, the wheel wasn't really in there very stable, so it just kind of slowly fell over. Condors, I'm not knocking Condor because I think these are the best that money can buy. These things are fantastic. They're, they're really well made. They're not too heavy, but they're just brick shit houses, if you know what I'm saying. Uh, and you can mount them to the floor or not. And the customer service is great. So I'm just saying you got to set it right, right? If you don't set it right, things can go bad fast. So um, enough, what I do with these, and I'll show you in a minute, and this is verified by Condor, I'm not insane here, is you can use these without mounting them to the floor. Of course, it's better to mount on the floor and use the bracket, but in my case, my rig has a fully enclosed, heated and cool, not heated and cool, but a heated underbelly. There's a shield piece. And I mean, I'd have to drop the belly pan, deal with all that to even put a bracket in. And then, because mine is a not a garage toy hauler, the, you know, the, the one you'll see in a minute, but the main room is garage and living space and everything, I don't want brackets in the floor that are permanently mounted because I got a little one with little toes and she will stub that sucker in three in the morning and be crying. So I don't want permanent bracks, brackets on the floor, except for the D-rings that are, that, you know, come from the factory and that thing. So I'll show you in a minute, but you can just set that chalk on the floor, ride your bike into it, strap her down. It's stable. It ain't going anywhere. If that bike moves, you did not have it strapped down right. So I'll show you in a minute. Uh, we'll Put the golf cart and the crossbones in it because that's what i'm taking but 
Condor chalks. I don't have any relationship with them, but that's the one I buy. So there you go. didn't fit <laughs> fat guys wore out um it's loaded here I'm sorry let me show okay. you I don't know what you can see <laughs> so I'm taking the crossbones in the golf cart why am I taking the golf cart well that's a good question I or a question I get asked every time this time because my friends asked me to I got friends coming from up here and they're gonna hang out with us in the campground and they tend to be drinking and stuff and it's a place to sit you're taking chairs around with you basically and they wanted it because they think it's fun so i'm bringing it i wouldn't have brought it but whatever uh <laughs> so i got four corners uh tied down there to my d-rings there in my rig you can see so i got from the the crash bar up front which is mounted to the frame you got to do this it's an important man thing you have to do that ain't going anywhere and then you got to grab your bike and do the same that ain't going anywhere so uh, tied down so I got the condor chalk on the floor not not attached to anything it's just sitting there but then I got two straps on soft straps down from the bars to the d-rings there uh, and then I got another one looped through the wheel in the back round and round to the d-rings back there so it's not a far trip I mean would I do this for Sturgis no I mean if I were doing it for Sturgis I got more d-rings back there even though it ain't, it's it's fine it's gonna be fine but for Sturgis I would have put you know middle straps and I don't know and I wouldn't have done it like this. I would have put this guy, you know, forward and all, you know, but I won't do that. So there we are. Later we'll unload. Knowing, God damn it. This, I mean, let me not dry. Let me not die on camera. Knowing that there's somebody who's already saying stupid shit in the comments section and wanting to comment on something. As I'm rolling down the highway here, 70 mile an hour, working the steering wheel because it's windy as hell out there getting nine miles to the gallon at five dollars a gallon for diesel um with a further i'm just making down an inventory here further six times five thirty thirty gallons of gasoline in the bed of my truck besides the 30 gallons of gasoline that are in the tank of the rig so what i'm laying out here is i got 60 gallons of fuel for the generator i've got eight pounds a gallon times 80 is 360 eight eight times eight, 640 <laughs> wait yeah 640 pounds of water i'm lugging my bike and the, and the, and the golf cart and all stuff someone is is out there going like i can't believe he's trailer into a rally that's only four hours from his house that's making the assumption that it's because i don't want to ride and that is not true i would so much rather be on my bike right now because you know a three and a half four hour blast of the turnpike at 80 mile an hour with loud music blaring or none you know but it unties your knots you know what i mean you get to wherever you're going feeling good and relaxed and all that stuff and i don't get to enjoy that because i have to get all this crap up there so i don't take my rv to rallies to avoid riding <laughs> which is the stupidest freaking thing people say that shit all the time it's just so stupid i take my rv to rallies because it's fun like we're gonna be in a campground tonight that i have seen some of the craziest stuff ever happen um com that's compared to sturgis i mean i have seen stuff at this campground that that are just it's hilarious and awesome and fun to the point to where the friends where I commented earlier they all said bring the golf cart bring the golf cart I have friends who are staying in hotels because they don't have an RV they're staying in hotels they're still coming to the campground to party because they all know how crazy this place can be so just a quick you know comment on the whole can't believe he's trailer and you're stupid you're not thinking use your fucking head before you open your mouth um anywho let me get back to driving before I hit a fucking tractor trailer and die in a ball of fire i'm always freaking exhausted every time so that's done uh golf cart was uh right here all the way and then i had the bones shoved in here four straps each uh, i only use rhino straps they're the best i think i've bought them for years 
uh, and then I use the Condor chalk for the bike, and then the, the golf cart, I just ratchet strap down on the four corners. It don't go nowhere. It really doesn't. Um, let's do a, I guess, a walk through the rig for those of you who haven't seen it. Maybe that's worthwhile. You tell so, me. So that's the ramp. That's the back door. So I got this dinette back here, and there is a folding table that goes there. That's actually the one that's in my garage there that I have shit all over. But there's a folding table that goes there. The discoloration on the floor you're seeing is just from tires on the vinyl. There's actually a giant rug that comes with this thing that covers the entire back area. So you don't see any of this discoloration on the vinyl when you're just like family camping. There's a nice piece of carpet back here normally. But I'm in a field, so why the hell would I use the carpet? I want to keep it clean. So I got the... These tumble over and make a bed, queen size bed. That's also a queen size bed that jacks down from the ceiling. But only my daughter and or niece are allowed up there, A, because of weight limitations, and B, because only the babies sleep up there. They get their clean place. No freaking filthy ass bikers get to go up there. Anyway, I got uh, two windows in the back here. I never open them because it's hot. Another window that I never open because it's hot. And the window there, I don't open because it's hot. And then we got a giant, giant window that we really like, but I don't open it because it gets hot. Uh, tons of cabinets in this thing. It's one of the things we liked about it so much. Typical RV fridge. Uh, I can't remember what size TV that is, but that came with it. Tons of cabinets over here. You got that little couchy kind of thing with a table there. That's sort of my workspace when I'm on the road. That works just fine. Um, and then bathroom. It's, it's uh, 350 square feet, I think, which is oddly enough the size of the average American hotel room. So there you go. Tons of cabinets, as you see. Radius shower that does fit a fat guy, so that's not a problem. Skylight, vent, get all the funk out. Uh, hi. Mirror, more cabinets and a freaking sink. I mean, come on, guys. Like, this is not an RV channel. Matt's RV Reviews does a better job of that stuff if you... It's, I watch that stuff all the time. And then you got up front, the magic room. Uh, king size bed. Yes, it's an RV king, but that's like two inches shorter by, I don't know, it's it's an RV king. Uh, light TV up here. I did install this, didn't come with it, but the backer was in the wall, so added a TV up here. Uh, wardrobes, which are tiny closets on either side. Oh, I'm falling. Stuff front and left by the wife. And then you got mood lighting Woo! yeah so brown chicken brown cow uh window there tall window there and another door so if you got kids sleeping in the back and you guys want to go out and have a drink mom and dad come in here without bothering the children which is nice so and then it's got two doors it's got a door from the bedroom into the bathroom that then goes into the great room and then you got another door here that goes into the kitchen i think is freaking useless but why? I mean, I guess if there's someone in the bathroom you couldn't get out of the bedroom. Yeah, I guess that's a thing. So, uh, that cabinet up there is where I just keep nothing but tools and little parts that you got to have for an RV all the time. Came with these two recliners, which is cool. Like those things a lot. We typically will actually, when it's just the two of us camping, we'll just tumble and fold these up and then these jack up to the ceiling also. And we put the recliners back here. So that's where we watch TV from. But for TV, I, I have a a what do they call it a travel data which is this little box here it gives me wi-fi on the road 85 bucks a month like it yeah that's a giant red rooster don't ask any goddamn questions about it um and then i got a amazon fire stick in the back of the tv that you know goes off the wi-fi so i got like i'm at home i got all tv stuff microwave over there it's got an oven and a stove top the wife loved the giant pantry because most of these have no room for food so and then the fridge, you got a freezer up top for Fireball and whiskey, must have priorities. And then you got a fridge here for hot dogs, beer, and enough Coke. No, the rig is not level. Go ahead and laugh at me. It was, and it, uh, oh, you know, kind of walked off the, it's pretty funny because the chocks were on the wheels and everything, and it just moved about three inches forward off the little plastic thing, and bloop, now it's not level. I am not rehitching on to move that thing around. So another thing, another prime example, RVs ain't easy, man. This is not luxury. I mean, now I'm happy. I'm in the campground. I'm having a good time. Neighbors over here are really cool, nice people. Neighbor over here, really cool, nice people. Gonna have a good time. People I know who are awesome, who set up a stripper pole all the time. They're over there. They're nice people. We're gonna have a good old time. But, you know, the getting it here and the setting up and the expense, man. I mean, it's, it costs more than a hotel room. It does. 
the fuel of the truck pulling this thing, I got nine miles a gallon for 500 miles round trip, figured that out. And then, like I said, 30 something gallons of generator gas. It's, I mean, a hotel room would be cheaper here. So, anywho, that's it. Let me know what you think. There'll be a lot more Leesburg videos. This is just getting here, setting up, and getting ready. Uh, I'm going to have a good old time because the boy needs it, you know? Needs to untie some knots. So, catch y'all later. Take care of each other out there. We'll talk real soon. Bye.